Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard at Hubbard's Marina, tuning in for our Sunday night live stream show. Thanks for watching, y'all. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us on this beautiful Sunday night. Uh, got another great show lined up for you, and uh, we've got Smokey in the studio tonight. You ready, Smoke? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. He had to put his whiskey down to answer. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this thing rocking. Hey, Facebook, thanks for tuning in. Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina, and I've got Smokey with me tonight. How you doing, Smoke? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well, doing well. We got another great show lined up for you guys uh, for this Sunday night live stream show. That's every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. Tonight, we're going to be talking all about nearshore and offshore fishing. We're going to be talking about what we've been catching, what's been going on, and uh, we're going to answer your fishing comments, questions, and concerns. And we're going to talk a lot about hogfish tonight. Hogfish is kind of the main topic of tonight's show as we have hogfish just around the corner. And uh, plus, Smokey likes catching them. And he's got some secrets to share with you guys. Some of them I don't agree with, but you guys are going to talk about that. You'll be the de deciding factor tonight. And uh, you'll let us know if Smokey's full of it or if he knows what he's talking about. But I guess you have to go fishing with us to find out, huh, Smokey? Yep. We got some reels we're going to show you, some rods, some uh, lures. Yeah. I have a special lure. He's got a special lure. <laughs> some extra special. I forgot about that. He really does have a special lure. Uh, it's definitely going to be a good show for you guys tonight. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Hopefully you got your drink ready. And uh, you're relaxed, ready for another great show. We're going to be giving away a 10-hour all-day for two, a five-hour half-day for two. Most likely, we'll probably be giving away a free 39-hour. Remember, it's a half-price 39-hour unless we reach 300 live viewers. If we reach 300 live viewers, then it is a free 39-hour trip. Plus, we're going to be talking all about some new products we got in our shop. Smokey brought some in tonight that he wants to show off. So you're going to get to watch Smokey try to get product in front of the camera, which is going to be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys missed the last time Smokey was in studio, he's no Vanna White. Uh, so that should be interesting. And uh, we got some other great stuff lined up for you guys. So make sure you comment where you're watching from. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. Share it on your timeline. Share it to your favorite fishing group. And uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and also make sure you like the video and share it with your friends. We're going to get started here very shortly. Just give us a few minutes and we will get rolling. We're going to talk all about what we've been catching, what's been going on, what's coming up. Then we're going to answer your fishing comments, questions, and concerns. Plus, we're going to give away lots of hogfish tips and tricks. So hopefully you guys are ready for a great show. Uh, I know I am. It's always fun hanging out here with Smokey. And hopefully I won't miss work tomorrow. We'll see. Last time you made me miss work, Smokey. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> well, I'm maybe... trying to get Mike to work for me tomorrow. Oh, so you're one to miss work tomorrow too. Yeah. Yeah, this is not a good idea tonight, guys. It's going to get ugly. <laughs> but hopefully you guys are ready for another great show. I know we are. We got a lot of cool stuff lined up for you and a lot of great tips and tricks. Smokey thinks he's got some insider tricks. Plus, we got kingfish around the corner. You ready, Smoke? I'm excited for that. Kingfish, that's your favorite time of year, dog. I love kingfish. He gets to wear his flannels. Yeah. You love your flannel. <laughs> If you don't know Smokey, yeah. you don't know flannel. <laughs> you, yeah, I mean, you, you would think you're a lumberjack in the fall. A sea bass went and bought a flannel. Yeah, he's trying to pull off the yeah. Smokey look. <laughs> sea bass can rock a flannel, though. He's getting there. You know, when he first started wearing the flannel, I was like, I don't know if you can pull that off, but he, he's got it. In 10 years, he'll pull it off. Yeah, yeah. He's you, 37. <laughs> he's 37? <laughs> He's older than you think. Seabass is 37? Yeah, he looks good for his age. That's surprising. All right, so I think it's about time to get rolling here. We got uh, 200 live viewers, a little more than 200 live viewers already, Smoke. People must want to hear what you got to say. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, let's get started. Uh, and three, two, one. Oh, we started early. Hello. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Thanks for go. tuning in. Uh, remember, tonight we are going to be giving away some free stuff. In order to win that free stuff, guys, you do have to comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page in order to be eligible to win. And uh, that's what's going to make you entered into a chance to win one of those free trips. And then also you have to continue watching the show uh, because... Remember, when we call your name, you have to message our page. When you message our page, that lets us know that you are watching live and uh, you're able to receive that uh, free trip or something else. I don't know what else you got up your sleeve tonight. I don't I mean, I don't know. It's your money. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a lot of cool stuff lined up for you tonight, guys. So make sure you sit back, relax. Don't forget to share the stream with your friends. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And uh, we're going to get into this. Remember also as well that uh, you, uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> uh, oh, I remember. Uh, remember, we do this Sunday night show every Sunday night. So make sure you tune in again next week. We'll be doing it again every Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. Tonight is August 18th. So if you're not watching this live, you can still enjoy the show, but if you are watching this live, you got a chance to win. So let's get into this thing. It's go time. It's go time. Oh, you don't want to see him do that. Ooh. When he rolls his hands, <laughs> that's not a good thing. Hey. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that 44-hour trip. We've got some super light trips going on, man. I mean, your 10-hour trips, I mean, I think Tuesday we've got six people lined up. That's that's how bleak it is right now. There is nobody around. The these, light trips are the good trips. And these are the trips that are going on now. I mean, we have literally 15, 20 people. Today's half day had 20 people go out. 20 people. And they got a lot of fish. They did very well. Super light loads right now during the week. So it's a great time to get out there and enjoy some fishing with this guy and uh, all the other captains and crew at Hubbard's Marina. So definitely a good time to get out there. And on our 39-hour trip, this Friday's 39-hour trip only has 29 people booked. So super light load. Or actually, I think it's even less than that. Uh, but let's show you what that 44-hour haul in here, guys. They caught some nice fish. That's a nice gag right there. Beautiful gag. Beautiful big old gag. So they got some gags. They got some red grouper. They got a few scamp. They got some big mangroves, some amberjack. And we're going to show you some of those photos now. We didn't get a ton of photos. This trip was incredibly rough. This 44-hour trip came in this morning. So if you're not local, uh, if you are local, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not local, uh, it was really, really, really rough this weekend. Very rainy. Uh, and we're going to show you that. We got a video. But, Smokey, tell the people what happens when you record rough weather on a camera. It bounces around everywhere. And it's never actually impressive. No. it. I mean, yeah, these are 10-foot waves. And you show it out there, and it just looks like some white caps. Yeah. It's really, really disappointing. But uh, you can see here, they Look, got there some... there it is. Yeah. That is a monster mangrove snapper, but that rough weather. How made much do you think that thing weighs? Dude, that's a solid nine pound mangrove, nine if not pound more. Mango. That's huge. That's a mangrove snapper. I know it's really blurry. You probably can't see it, but that's a monster mangrove. Kind of a bad photo, but it was such a big mangrove. I still wanted to show you. Some nice amberjack and plenty of them. This trip, this 44-hour trip, brought in more amberjack than I've seen on a trip in probably two or three years. I mean, the amberjack were just frothing on top of the water, around the water, and it was a killer trip for amberjack. And I think it was because of the rough weather. I mean, eight, ten footers on the way out, it slowly calmed down. During the day, it calmed down to a nice six, seven foot so it was definitely a bumpy trip. Now, on the buoys, the time, the forecast was calling for about four to six foot. On the buoy, it was showing like six, six and a half foot. But the buoys, the forecast, that kind of uh, forecast, that significant wave height or that high average. Uh, when you have a six foot sea out there, sometimes you see a few more. Like if the forecast calling for six foot, what do you see You're out there? You're probably going to see an eight for sure. Yeah, at least. Yeah. 
and uh, let's show you the video. You guys can decide for yourself. So this is a video from the 44-hour uh, trip, and uh, John Martin walked down on deck. This is right before they started fishing there Friday night. Check this out. All right, we're about a half hour before we start, maybe an hour, and uh, not quite fully dark. So I wanted to give you a little perspective of just how rough it is out here. saying thinking that hey that's really not that rough and it's probably not it doesn't look that bad but the camera does not do that type of seed justice and by the way we are already over 300 live viewers so oh. we, we are giving away a free 39 hour trip but you have to stay tuned in order to win so let's see some more videos from that 44 hour all right here's one i just pulled in lots of amberjack pretty nice one just amberjack 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 uh -huh. Barely late. It is a lot of fun. They're awesome. Yeah, kingfish fight. They give you that nice hard long run. Amberjack fight. Another one coming up here. They're vertical. Kingfish are more horizontal. They both give you nice long runs. And they're tricky. They pull the hook on you. And they're a little finicky to bite sometimes. Got one on? AJ. Keep cranking. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Now this guy here with this big old rod, he had, uh, he, this was one of his first trips with us. And uh, he was a little frustrated. He had lost a couple of big amberjacks. So he went out and got the broomstick. Look at that rod. And uh, he wasn't going to lose this fish. It's still taking drag. That is a monster reel. Look at it take a drag. The rod's not even bending. <laughs> that is a serious rod. Not even worried about the foam on the rail. Oh, that, that is a good stick. His buddy right next to him hooks up too. These guys are good friends. They caught a bunch of And a bucket full of them to the barrel Will's coming. dragging a whole barrel full of jacks up to the bow to pack them in ice. Rough, extreme weather. Yeah, 
No, just fight him. Don't worry about this one. Good job. Good job. This is in the back. What's the other man? Some nice jacks. For sure. That one's kind of a mediocre size, but hey, they're nice jacks. Oh, so we almost get this one. 60, 70 pounds. Not you. Two for two. Say where you are. We were catching as many jacks in the beginning of the season. The jacks we were catching were all 80, 90 pounds. Uh, these jacks on this trip, we caught that handling. You can't game pole it. A little lighter on the 60 pound side, maybe. Uh, I got you. Got him. They get you down there, they'll you off. Really? So on this trip, we definitely didn't get as the video's over. <laughs> no, hey. I was so, like, what is that? <laughs> We're gonna click on. <laughs> so on this trip, we click, didn't... click on something. <laughs> <laughs> on this trip, we didn't get quite as big of jacks, but the numbers definitely made up for it. We're gonna show you the catch uh, real quick. And for those of you who pay attention to our Facebook page or YouTube video or YouTube page, you saw the video of the catch this morning. You saw all those big fish they brought in, uh, but definitely all. all right. the Here's the good. This is a good example of what these amber jackets are doing. So this is a really, really physically fit guy struggling about this boat. Look how much the bow is moving up and down. It's easy to move up and down six, ten, floating bounds on these waves. This guy's be careful, they can be a bit slick. Another fish on the deck trying to get this thing up off the bottom. Yeah, look at him. He's got the leverage, he's got the Celebrating after that one. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, Amberjacks. <laughs> All right. Well, Before we were that. talking about something specific about Amberjack. Uh, big, the biggest Amberjack. 
Oh, it was the biggest one in the trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so it had a really fat belly to it, and uh, Will and the guys were super curious. This is the kind of stuff Will does on the boat. So he sees a really fat fish. What does he do? He guts it. There was no there was no jackpot on this trip because they were worried with such a light load, not many people, not many people interested in the jackpot. They were a little worried about going out there and people getting seasick since it was such a rough ride out. So they decided not to take a jackpot. But because of that. He was able to go exploring. So yeah. this big old fat bellied amberjack comes up and Will guts it to see what it had in its stomach, what bait was working for him. What was in it? Guess what it had in it? Uh porgy. Nope. Spade fish. Nope. So you can't get spade fish in the belly of an uh, amberjack naturally what offshore. What are you talking about? Spade fish aren't offshore. That's an inshore well, he fish. He could have stole somebody's bait. <laughs> All right, so long story short, he guts this fish, and what did it have in its belly? It had file fish. A file fish. File fish. It had three big file fish in its belly. That's pretty strange, right? Yeah. I mean, file fish are not a bottom fish. That's up off the bottom. That thing had to go find that file fish. Pretty, pretty crazy. File fish aren't on the bottom? File fish are, uh, they're typically up around the sargasm and you catch those, I guess you, I guess file fish are on the, near they're the on, bottom. They're on the bottom. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're a weird fish though. That's like a trick fish. I got it. I was trying to get the hell get him. I got it. Yeah. He redeemed himself with that. I got it. I was trying to get the hell get him. I got him. John, we got him. I got him on him. fish there and uh this is one of the last ones we're gonna show you this is we got the last fish of the day on here man this is the calm part of the trip when they're heading home it's a great combination here florida fisherman too like mr jessica's a cabinet maker extraordinaire reeling on the pin fish caught by john martin and about to be gassed by will you don't like hard to break out of the bottom. It's so much it's too stretchy. It's good. It's nice. You get back in the bottom and you can't get it out. If you can't break it out of the bottom, that's good. You're going to get that fish on the bottom. Yeah, you can't. He did like I think uh, 27 39 hour trips in two uh, months. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah. That'll that'll give you abs. One day he texted us 
Who's messing with me? This is my house for 27 days. I guess Mike Lee's kid put a bunch of gloves in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> this is my house for 27 this days. This is my house for 27 days. <laughs> or however many, two months. Yeah, 62 days. 62 days. Yeah. yeah. He, he, lived... was, he was mad about it, and he felt bad. That he yelled at a kid? That he yelled. <laughs> and then it turns out Mikey's kid was in the wheelhouse and put a bunch of gloves in his bed. <laughs> Innocent yeah. fun turned yeah. bad. Well, uh, it could. One time they lit his feet on fire. What? They sprayed his feet with WD forty and then and then sprayed it. But Are w- you sure you should tell this story? I, I, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then sprayed. So this the, was in. This is in the wheelhouse. Yeah, he's sleeping. He's sleeping. They sprayed his feet with WD forty and then tried to light the WD forty, but WD forty doesn't light, I guess. <laughs> so he got out of bed. Why are my feet all slippery? <laughs> <laughs> so they tried yeah. to light his feet on fire and it yeah. wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so. so I could see why he would think that people were messing with him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's follow that up with some inshore yeah. fishing. Yeah. And then we're going to get to near shore because you guys, we're going to share some really, really good near shore fishing tips and tricks like that hogfish information that Smokey's holding up here and (laughs) some other good tips so we're gonna go inshore then we're gonna work our way back offshore so let's see here what's been going on in the inshore waters that's a big old snook right there that's a nice snook yeah the the uh spool tech lure i don't know if y'all can see that let me zoom in a lure that is the spool tech lure it's a swim bait that has a uh wire leader is that rubber though yeah, it's a it's a hard front with a soft rubber tail. It's a paddle tail bait, but it's got a wire leader spooled up in the bait. So when you hook the snook, it deploys that wire leader so the snook can't break you off. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fancy. That's cheating. <laughs> well, gotta... welcome to 2019, <laughs> Smokey. That's Technology, shit. dog. Yeah. Yeah, that was on a kayak inside John's Pass, catching a lot of those nice snook inside the pass. And uh, here's another one from John's Pass, if I can make the mouse change gears here. There we go. Got to unzoom it. There's another one from... Did you just refill me? Yeah. All right. No, there's another one from John's Pass from the jetty. Uh, Mr. John Sasser and his flare hawk jigs. He loves that chartreuse pink flare hawk. Uh, it's a rattle hawk, so it's a flare hawk jig with a little rattle added to it, bouncing that thing right along the bottom real slow or a slow retrieve just above the bottom. The beginning or tail end of the incoming tide or outgoing tide, depending on what the moon's doing and what the weather's doing, he catches a lot of snook. And you know what? like that? Yeah, the flare hawk jig, man. That's a new thing. Again, 2019, where you been? It's green, red, and... It's, it's essentially a bucktail. It's a real heavy bucktail, but like if you're a uh, a, a pier uh, or jetty snook fisherman right now, yeah. that's what you're throwing at night. Those flare hawks, that's the new thing. Awesome. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah. But it works. A lot of people catch fish with them, and you're just dragging them right above the bottom or bouncing them right along the bottom, and uh, snag a lot of rocks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from what I hear. But uh, you catch a lot of fish too. I'd and rather this... bring a bucket <clears throat> and a live bait. <laughs> but if you're if <laughs> you're fishing school. if you're fishing a pier or a jetty all night long, you can't have enough live bait in a bucket to I'm last. I'm gonna it. bring a bucket with some live bait in it. Yeah, but that's not gonna last you all night. You, yeah. I've watched you, know you fish for snook, Smokey. You use a half dozen bait in 15 minutes. And I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, but these guys are out there all night. I'm not going to be on a jetty all night. Yeah, you? see, that's the yeah. difference. There you go. If you want to fish all night, that, that flare hawk's where it's at. But uh, this guy, John Sasser, he fishes out there every night. You go out really? to John's Pass Jetty any morning, any, like, five out of seven when I'll mornings. Leave here, I'm going down there looking for him. No, it's early morning. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., he's out there. We still, we're partying after this. I got to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, right. <laughs> you'll never make it. I'll never make it. <laughs> you might make it there, but you'll be gone in 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, last, <laughs> last time you were here. 
Uh, so this was a big old bull redfish. Captain Chris Wiggins uh, from, I think, Salty Hook Charters does some inshore fishing trips. He sent me this photo of this big bull red. There's a lot of redfish schools around Tampa Bay right now. Big old, big old breeder redfish schools moving around the mangrove lines. And what's going to happen in a few weeks? We're going to see big bulls offshore. Those big schools inside yeah. Tampa Bay right now. They're swimming around those oyster bars, those mangrove shorelines, North Shore, South Shore of Tampa Bay. They're getting fat, they're getting hungry, and uh, they're about to head offshore to spawn in big schools. And that's when Smokey and everybody runs into them on those five hours, those 10 hour trips. And it's always right around the fall time, right around the kingfish. It's uh, amazing. They're, they come yeah. at you like big spots of gold just swimming to the boat. It's like a gold rush. Yeah. You see them coming and everybody's freaking out. What's that? What's that? And then yeah. everybody's rod bends. Yeah. And it's a night. Nice, they are on everything. If you have bear it there, hooks. they grab it. Bear hooks. Yeah. It works. It's crazy. And then we got Jeff Groves or Geoff Groves or however you pronounce this guy's name. <laughs> Big black drum. Big old nasty black drum. Those things are a lot of fun to catch. They're really, really, really fun. Catch them around those bridges in Tampa Bay and any pass really. The what's your favorite bait for them? When I call uh, crab. Yeah, you stole mine. When I used to catch those <clears throat> when I was a kid, I called them gandy groupers. Gandy groupers, yep. yeah. <laughs> this is uh, you just uh, catch them and let them go. Yeah, this is one of the Tampa Bay bridges. Promised I wouldn't give it away, but you could probably see in the background. Don't say it if you can pick it out, Smokey. Yeah. But this is one of the Tampa Bay bridges. Gandy has a lot of them. Uh, Howard, not Howard Franklin, but um, the Dick Meisner. The, the intro bridge to the Skyway has a lot of them. What the, is it? What <laughs> I'm not repeating it. Uh, the Dick Meisner Bridge. Uh, the hey. half a crab on the bottom or a big live shrimp. But you know what he caught this one on? Is a live target greenback. Wow. Crazy, right? Artificial lure. I mean, you could. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. But yeah, that's the inshore bite right now. He We're got seeing... lucky. Yeah, he's, he's good. He's more than lucky. He's good. But uh, let's see here on the near shore side of things. We've been catching a lot of fish. Duncan! <laughs> Nothing beats taking a kid fishing, right, yeah. Smokey? I've been taking this kid fishing since... Actually, I took, his, I took this kid fishing when he was in his mama's belly. I've seen this kid as an infant in yeah. his mama's arms catching fish. Yeah. Infant. You, I've seen... Six his, months. I've seen his mom reeling in fish... I wasn't going to tell this story. Pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, that kid's been fishing with us a long time. Good old Duncan and his stringer of gray snapper or white grunts from that five-hour half day. Great fun for the whole family. Good, look at his shirt. Yeah, he's got the Hubbard. He looks like you. Look yeah, at, he, he's you got match. more hair than me. He's got more hair than you. <laughs> and he's got a better smile. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Uh, all right, so then the hogfish bite, that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Hey, we're talking hogfish tonight. We're talking hogfish tonight. All right, let's talk. So there is the start of the hogfish season. It's definitely starting. It's not really here yet, right? No, it's not here yet, but it's going to happen, so we have to start talking about it. We have to prepare. It's time to prepare, folks. Yeah. It's it's hogfish 30, right? Hogfish I mean, it's definitely on our doorstep. We're gonna we're gonna get you guys excited for the hogfish action with a quick slideshow. Well, it's not really quick. There's like 500 photos here. But look at my flannel. Yeah, that. See, yeah. we were talking about look the flannel. Look at that guy. Yeah. Oh, and that guy. You're gonna know a lot of people in the oh, thing. Yeah. Don't okay, don't I lose can't focus. Say that every yeah, time. don't lose All focus. Right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna talk a little yeah. bit. Look that at that guy. Been, that's been um... <laughs> <laughs> that's been digitally yeah, altered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about those hogfish tips or tricks, right, Smokey? Yep, that's what we're doing tonight. All right, so Talking about the hogfish. So hogfish, what is your favorite reel for a hogfish? My favorite, my favorite reel. My favorite? Did my you say favorite? favorite? I did say favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, go ahead. All right, next question. You didn't answer. Yeah. Your favorite reel. All right. Well, uh, let's. See. I like a spinning rod. I spin and reel. You you raided the shop and brought all that tackle. You got to pull some of it well, out. Well, we got to talk a little bit first. All right. All right. All right. We're gonna talk it? a little bit. 
We got plenty of time. Is, There's no rush. Uh, okay. All right. You want to break out your? Uh, I like a spinning Let's see if we can. Oh my god. There it is. Uh, we should go back. Here. Wait a minute. We got to stop the slideshow. We got a lot yeah. going on right now, this man. This is gonna be fun. Dude, don't break the tip. Turn the ceiling <laughs> fan on. <laughs> Turn the ceiling. <laughs> the white light, Vanna White. There he goes. Who there is it is. It? There that it is. is the. It? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Look. At, look. It's right this on there. This is a... Uh, Daiwa Eliminator. This is one of the new combos that we have in our shop. This thing has got a core candle to it. It's nice and light. It's a, nice and strong. It's got the power that you need. It's a little smaller, and it is very affordable, though. This is a $100 combo. Budget combo. Budget combo. And, uh, I mean, for 100 bucks, you got core candle. You've I got love the core candle. You feel everything. You feel everything. You do feel everything. <laughs> so for a hundred bucks, you got the cork grips. You got a really nice reel. It looks good. It's aggressive looking, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty if nice. If you're going to use a cork grip, do me a favor. Take the plastic off of it. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> it is pretty funny. Yeah. Just so let it go. Take <laughs> the plastic off of the cork. So there's a couple different types of handles. This this is my personal favorite. I mean, Smokey said he's a cork grip fan. For me, it's EVA. I like the EVA grips because that EVA, which is more common, that dark black, like foamish, that's EVA. I think that's what it's properly called. But uh, EVA is my favorite. You saying that's you like the, cork. That's what the kids are using now. No, it's just a different option. Some kids like the cork. You know old, what? You know what? Guys the, know things. The kids are using now. You know what they're using yeah. is that like uh, golf club grip. Yeah. A lot of that stuff is rubber now. That's weird. I don't like that because when my hands are wet, you try to grab that grab that rubber stuff, and your hands get slippery. Cork That's, is all natural. Cork is, but again, what I'm talking about is like when you're on a trip and you're catching those fish and you're unhook them, your hands are slimy, you're reaching in that squid bucket or that shrimp bucket, yeah. your hands get slippery. Yeah, they do. And cork sucks. Sucks it all up. No. <laughs> you switched it around on me. I wasn't even done complaining it, it about it. It sucks it all up. And then it you're doesn't like, it's suck all it all bad. up. It does. No, the cork, in my opinion, gets way too slippery. You get some fish slime on the cork. You're never going to be able to hold that reel. All right. In my opinion. Smokey says cork's his favorite. Cork's better. In my opinion, that EVA grips where it's at. Yeah. Right, so you go. guys there decide we for yourself. We got both in the shop. So Text us what you like. Or don't text yeah, us. What comment, is comment. Comment. I'm sorry. Comment what you like. That's comment a good idea. Like. Should we Should we run a poll? Cork or... Uh, uh, Kevin Wildheart, cork is the best. Jess Smith, cork is the best. Cork is the best. This is crazy. You guys are crazy. Yeah. Look at it. Everybody's yeah. saying cork is better. Cork is better. This cork is, is better. Yes. Cork is best. <laughs> You're off the show. Okay. Everybody out. <laughs> I don't know. In my opinion, I like the EVA, in my opinion. But, hey, that's just me. That's just me. All right. Everybody's saying cork is better. Yeah, it is. Yeah, see, Pat McGrath said go with a bull bay. The bull bays that I designed, I like cork, or I don't like cork. I like EVA, so I put EVA on it. Yeah. Maybe we should do another line yeah. of bull bay rods with the cork. That might just happen. Sometimes I cork my back. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you cork your rods. Yeah. You might as well cork yeah. your back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. Jonathan Michael De Niro. He's the man. EVA. That's where it's it? at. That, he agrees with me. How many I've, people do we got on here? I can't see this. We've got, what's 263 plus 67? Uh, we got 350 people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you made that up. <laughs> uh, but all right, so let's get back to what we were talking about. Hogfish. So Hogfish. We, we, we got very this distracted. EVA versus okay. cork. Oh, all right, I have a bunch of stuff over here. Yes. Are we talking all right, hogfish? So, no, we're talking about reels. So the reel for the hogfish, we decided spinning reel is the best. We haven't decided which is better, cork or EVA. But besides the spinning reel, you want to make sure you have the right size spinning reel. So in my opinion... The 4,000 to 5,000 series spinning reel is best, but there are some lines of spinning reel. Even a 3,000 will work. You want to make sure you have some drag. Those those hogfish can bite. Though they can fight, right? They pop. They pop. They pop. They pop, and they'll they'll rock you up just like a grouper. 
Hello. Yeah. Yeah. All, all right. right. Here we Don't go. We, I have, we have right. this one right here. So this one is the Quantum Smoke. This is one of the ones that we have in the shop. Really like the Quantum uh, Smoke. I just the reason. Out. The reason I like the Quantum Smoke is you can see the cuts in the frame, kind of like my Glock. <laughs> you got all the cuts in the frame. It makes it really, really nice and light. It makes it really, really easy to handle, and uh, it makes it very sensitive because the lighter the rod, the lighter the reel, the lighter the combo. And when you've got a nice, light, strong combo, you have that greater sensitivity, right? I just like the name. Smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. You set me up for that one. <laughs> right, I missed it. The other one besides, so we sh we started with that Daiwa combo, the the budget combo, the hundred dollar combo. That smoke, this real, what is this thing run? So it's about one forty. One forty four. Forty four. Forty four ninety nine. Uh, yeah, no, one forty four. One forty four ninety nine. The uh, that's kind of your next step up, and then this was my go to for a long time. This is the Stratic. We have some of the newer Stratics in the shop now. This is the CI four. Uh, we've got some of the newer Stratics in our shop in the marina. But I oh my god, I like here, the Stratic. Let's put this back up here. Don't make fun of my bass. He's lure. bass fishing. I'm bass fishing. <laughs> People, love, you know, you you make fun of bass. I'm fishing. not making fun of bass. fishing. You better not, because bass dude, fishing I is this is I, I me personally, I don't like bass fishing that much, but I you. do it. But I do it. But we can't make fun of bass fishing because. 70 percent of people who fish bass fish where did you that's go buy facts. that hook that's bass pro dog <laughs> yeah bass <laughs> pro <laughs> yeah i went up to jacksonville for my little cousin's confirmation he's got a bass lake behind his house it was fun can we take a break no we can't take a break we're live all right we'll take a break all right so next reel so we did the budget one that diowa um Dominate what is eliminator Daiwa eliminator that we have in the shop? We got some other Daiwa options too. Uh, my favorite Daiwa options can you grab that red box out of there? Are we going? Are we? Oh, yeah. So, just like the conventionals, uh, the spinning rods, Daiwa makes well, You're let's show the box the, I'm first. Vanna, right? All right? Well, you suck at being Vanna, you can't show it on camera. Show the box first. Well, I gotta... It doesn't even have the brand. There you go. This is my yeah. favorite part. <laughs> the salt. Oh, it? Oh, it doesn't even. Say it says it on the side you're yeah, showing. Right there. Oh my gosh, there it is. The saltist. So just like the conventional reels, the spinning reels, Daiwa makes the saltist and saltiga brand. Just pull it down. You're not going to be able to pull it out like this that. This is your next reel. Yes, there Look it is. That. Unboxing. All right, go ahead, Dana. <laughs> Well, right. We're just going to leave this uh, one. We're not bringing this back to Marina. Don't tell Amanda, uh, but that's going so, right on this rod. <laughs> uh, I thought we were giving it away. No, we're not giving this one away. Right, Heck no. <laughs> All right, so let me see this thing. We'll put it together real quick. All right. This thing is nice. Let me see what else I have over here. What else do you have in the box? It's a bag. In the bag box? I actually have a bag. You have a bag? In the bag. You have a bag in a bag? It comes with a bag. That's the quantum. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're talking Daiwa now, dog. Right. We stepped our game up. Quantum's great. Don't get me wrong. I really like quantum, but uh, quantum, they make a great product. But this Daiwa Saltist, smooth. that is smooth. And it's just like the conventional. It's uh, that blue and black kind of uh, color scheme. Really, really like this Daiwa Saltis. Now, this is a 4000 series Saltis. Just went full Daiwa in our shop. This thing has got a lot of, I guess I should turn the Anna Reverse on. <laughs> that would help so it's not re reeling backwards. But it's very, very smooth, very clean looking. These new Daiwas, they got best in show at iCast, I think, last year when they announced these because they're mag sealed. So you can dump this sucker in the water. I could literally throw this in the salt water and bring it back out and no salt water has gotten into the gears a guy threw my rod in the water <clears> the other day i know but he was casting but your rod isn't mag sealed and went right away so all right we're gonna get down another rabbit trail but i want to hear the story what happened to your reel he threw my rod in the water basically <laughs> someone <laughs> threw your rod in the water 
Yeah. On a trip? He casted it at Backlash. I, thought, I told him not to do it. I thought casting was in Fishing 102. You always tell you always tell people when they come out with you, you cast the rod and then you tell them when to reel. Yeah. But then but, you tell them not to cast. But guys are guys. So he didn't and listen. they're going to do what they're going to do. Didn't listen. They have to cast. <laughs> <laughs> So he went to cast. And that's why we're selling these. Because <laughs> they make it easy to cast. Yeah. 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 Come on. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Because anybody can cast this. Yeah. You got a conventional reel. People try and cast it. It doesn't work out. Casting a conventional reel is definitely fishing 101. Or fishing 102. Maybe even 103. That's pretty tough. You should have a license. You should have a license. You have to be licensed to catch. Speaking of licenses. No, no, this no. This is the next no, thing. We're, we're going to show the next reel. Come on. Get okay. that away from here. So this is my baby. Look at that sucker. Would you look at that? Oh, the rod. There it goes. Look, that is the Daiwa Saltiga. So that is the level up from that saltist. How much is this This thing's... You don't want to know how much it Watch is. Watch out for the ceiling fan. This, ah, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> this is the Saltigo. It's got the power handle yeah. to it. It's definitely a next level uh, reel. It's crazy the drag capacity of that thing. You're so not ready for that. You, that is definitely. So this Saltist, yeah. this is a Saltist 4000. Does it have the drag rating on here? I can't read any of this. It's not in Japanese. I just can't read it. <laughs> the saltist, uh, the conventional, for example, the conventional saltist has. Why are you so close to me? Yeah, because I'm, your head is so big, and <laughs> so I. So the saltist, the saltist conventional has thirty-five pounds. You are literally leaning on me. Yeah. <laughs> the saltist conventional has thirty-five pounds of drag. The saltiga conventional has forty pounds of drag. Now I don't know how the spinning reels stack. <laughs> I don't know how the spinning reels stack up, but the Saltiga uh, convention or the Saltiga spinning reel has forty something pounds of drag. It's it's ridiculous. I was on a uh, thirty nine hour trip and I dropped that down with a um, a knocker rig, and it was crazy the amount of drag it had when I hooked into that red snapper. I was telling you that story today. Remember, smoke? Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, you got Here, your ass kicked. I did. There is the and fish. And you pulled it off twenty five. There it is. It I was a monster. bullshit on that. That ain't. That's what yes, you did. Oh, and we God. are live. You have to watch your mouth. So <laughs> I'm six foot seven, <laughs> 330 pounds. You're not telling me. You're telling me that's not a, almost 20 pound fish? I don't know if it is or not. That was I a mean, big red trick, snapper. Trick for talk. Maybe you're holding it behind your head. I'm not even holding my arm out straight. Okay. All right, well, whatever. We're going to settle this later. But it was a big fish regardless. Uh, I'm it, getting rode up. That, <laughs> that, that, that big red snapper ate that uh, knocker rig on the way down, and that drag of that Saltigo was able to stop it really, really easy. So it's really, really nice. And Are you watching all these comments? I'm trying to, but we're both talking a lot. But uh, to answer your question... We're getting off track, man. What was my question? Uh, what I was saying is that Saltiga has a lot of drag capacity. The Saltist oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, doesn't right. have as much drag capacity, but the Saltiga is a lot smoother, a lot more drag. So that's the main difference. But the Saltiga is exponentially more money. The conventional, for example, the, the conventional Saltist is three, three, like three, three ninety nine, three sixty. And the Saltiga conventional is like four ninety nine, and the spinning reel it's even more exponential. The Saltiga spinning reel is like seven hundred bucks. It's crazy. Don't tell your wives. I don't even think about money. <laughs> yeah. I just get what you give me. Yeah, I don't give you the Saltigas. I need some better stuff. <laughs> What are we going to talk you, after what are the we show? Gonna get, what are we going to get? So, like, Is one of these mine? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've talked about the reels. You have the different options. You can go the budget option. You can go the high-end option. The higher the end option, the more money you're going to spend, but the more smooth, the more drag capacity you're going to have. 
Now, once you've picked out your reel, your rod becomes important because for those hogfish, you want a sensitive rod. You want something that's nice and light that you're going to be able to feel that bite, but you also want something that's strong enough to where you're going to be able to fight that fish because those hogfish, they'll run you to the bottom. They'll rock you up. They're hard fighting fish. Pound for pound, hogfish, I think, fight they just as hard. Bah, man, when they come up, they're like, they go like this and they freaking dive down. That's that was a like terrible a, explanation. Like, no, it isn't. When they come up, they go like this. They they're, go back they're, and forth. So we're going to go. The mangrove snapper do that too, but they like pop harder. Well, mangrove snapper, I, I think, are a little bit smarter. So the mangrove snapper will fight hard, but then once you get them up off the bottom, they kind of quit. And they swim up to the uh, bottom of the boat trying to spit your hook. They're smart fish. The hogfish, they kind of do what almost like what a halibut or a flounder would do. So these mangrove snapper, you can see here. Come on, man, pay attention. Uh, hold on. These I'm, mangroves, I'm <laughs> these hogs. I need some ice. I'm trying to get some ice for my cup. <laughs> <laughs> you calling in backup? Uh, yeah, I'm calling. <laughs> so uh, the hogfish, the shape of that hogfish, he uses his shape to his advantage. Yeah. And what he'll do is he'll kind of do those zigzag that Smokey's poorly explaining. No, and what he's sorry. doing is he's using the shape of his body and that really tall, flat shape, kind of like a planer board. All right, let's do some trivia. You you know more about hogfish than me? Uh, I wouldn't. I'm What's not, the world I'm not, record? Hogfish? Yeah. The world record hogfish is... We've caught bigger. No, we haven't. I'll give you. A, I'll no. give you. A, no, we I'll give not. you. A, we haven't. No, absolutely right. not. Okay. World no, record hogfish. World hog record hook and line. World. Re well, I don't know the world record hook and line. They don't have that category. That not that I know of. There is a hog. But the record. world record hogs in like the twenty six pound range. The state record hogs in like the nineteen eighteen point nine or nineteen point eight pound range. It's a big hog. Stop rolling numbers off to me. You asked me the size of the state <laughs> record. <laughs> this Come on, man. But you gave Tighten me every up. record. Yeah, I know. Okay. We'll That's see. how I do. All right. Let's see. <laughs> if, if Dylan doesn't get this, I already know it. I Googled it. All right. Go ahead. What is the state record hogfish hook and line? I don't know hook and line. I know the record. 19.8. Right. Take your medicine. <laughs> to me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> hook and line, spear fish, it don't matter. You should be able to beat it. We almost beat it. That what that one it? hog what, fish what that we caught was 17.8 pounds. Oh, that's all it was? Yeah, it was It was close. Oh, and so we, we didn't beat it. And we got one hog fish, uh, I think, a couple years ago. That was that was like 19 point something. It was even uh, just a couple ounces away from the state record. Now, whether it's hook and line or spear fishing, I don't know. I just know the record and I want to beat it. <laughs> Does anybody know? Google it. Someone's Googling it right now. If you're going right to Google it right now, what would you say? If you guess it and let one of them Google it. This, if the state record's like 19.8, which is what I think it is, the hook and line record's probably right there close to it. I think it's 19. We caught a 19.8 or 19. I think it's 19.8 as a state. Is that the same thing? Yeah. No, 19.8 is not the same as 19.11. <laughs> well, we have to figure this out. What do you got there? All right, so let's Somebody move on. <laughs> we don't have much time left here, Okay, Smokey. so we got to go. All right, no, here we go. We, we talked about the rod, and we talked about the reel, so now let's talk about your favorite jig. Go ahead. Hold okay. that thing up. Now, first, oh, the line. I, we're going to start with the line right that yep. goes to the reel. Go this for it. This is what I like. That is the absolute wrong Let's side. See. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I was looking at it. Yeah, you got to hold it closer so okay, the glare you take doesn't care get of this. it. You so take that's care the of this Vanna. That's <laughs> what is that on your arm? I have bursitis, man. It's <laughs> terrible. My elbow kills. That is Power Pro Super Slick. And what Smokey is talking about is let me see if I can hold up the right side. That is the high vis. And why do you prefer high vis there, Smoke? Because it, I mean, if you're on. A personal boat, find whatever you use, whatever you want. But if you're on a party boat, then use the high vis because then we can figure it out. And you should be licensed to use <laughs> yeah, braided I mean, line. Braid Honestly, you should be licensed to use it. 
Braided line definitely helps because, again, as I mentioned before, it's your, not for everybody. Your reel needs to be powerful. It needs to be light to give you that sensitivity. Your rod needs to be really light so you have that insensitivity. But you need that heavy backbone. Your line also needs to give you that sensitivity when you're hog fishing because it's sometimes a really light bite, especially if you're knocker rig fishing or you're using a light lead. So when you're using when you're using a uh, hog fishing rig, typically it's braided line with a short, or actually a long, but uh, relatively short if you're talking top shot, like 20 pound, 20 or 30 pound fluorocarbon. Typically about 15 to 25 feet of that 20 to 30 pound test fluorocarbon. The fluorocarbon is definitely the trick. And then the hooks that we would recommend are definitely around that four-aught hook range. The four-aught hooks work really, really well because 20 to 30 pound test, four-aught hook, and then the egg sinker to finish off that knocker rig, uh, three-quarter ounce, one ounce, right around that range. And Smokey, this is the next thing we're going to talk about, but we're going to hold this for a second so you let me finish my thought. So you've got the light uh, light rod with the sensitive, good backbone. You've got the, the reel that's light, but it's got power to it you got the braided line to give you that extra sensitivity then you've got 15 25 feet of 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon that way that fish never has a chance to see your braid because if you're using that stupid high vis yellow braid the braid gets you out of a lot of trouble on a party boat but you also need to use that 20 20 the, the 25 high vis feet. braid but you're what i'm saying is you have to have that fluorocarbon on top of that oh braid. yeah so that way that fish doesn't have a chance to see it. And especially with those hogfish, they're very leader shy. They're very smart. So you want at least 15, 20 feet of that fluorocarbon on top of that braid, especially if you're using that high vis. And then you have that either knocker rig. So there's three different options. You could go knocker rig, you could go uh, just jig head, or you could go one of the jigs. One of the popular jigs that we use quite a bit is the naked ball jigs. Uh, they work really, really well. It's basically the weighted head with a little chain and then the uh, skirt on the back of it. You could tip that with shrimp or you could just use it by itself. Uh, they work really well in the one ounce, the half ounce range, quarter ounce even. Uh, but we also have been seeing those, uh, what was that, hog balls? The hog balls. The I hog like balls. the hog balls. The hog balls, they work yeah. well. So one of those jig options the uh, knocker rig option, or you could just simply use a jig head. The jig heads they, work really well, too. They love pink stuff. Pink stuff. Smokey pink stuff. swears oh, by the pink. I do swear by pink stuff. I think you just like pink, just I like you like, and your duct tape. I have some short, I have some, under, some panties <laughs> that say just, I love pink. <laughs> Oh shit! We All right, far. so All right. now we're gonna talk about this because to me, when I'm when I'm hog fishing, what I like using is just a knocker rig. The knocker rig is my favorite for sure. Definitely the uh, like maybe half ounce to three quarter ounce, maybe one ounce egg sinker and that four aught hook. But Smokey's claiming that these beads between beads. between your hook. Hogfish love beads. I think you're full of it, man. I Whatever really, you want to say. I, I Whatever will you put say. money on the fact that okay. you cannot catch hogfish as I easily with beads. I will guarantee you if you put... <clears throat> I don't know put, about this one. I don't put, believe it. If you put this, this, and this... You're not going to be able to get it to the camera. There you go. Am I there? Yeah. So he's saying you use a knocker rig. So you, you're, sinker, you're putting the egg sinker on, on the main line, a, a bead in between the egg sinker and the hook. And then a four out hook. You got them. So Smokey's claiming. Yeah. You're going to have to go through a bunch of shrimp to do this. Yeah. You obviously have to go through a bunch of shrimp. You're going to have to weed all these fish out. You're going to catch a bunch of other fish. There's uh, hogfish. There's the males. There's the females. For every male, there's probably like six or seven females that hang around them. They hogfish live in harems. Yep. You're 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 definitely. I know what I'm talking about. A little over the map, but that was right. Oh, it wasn't seven. Yeah, yeah hogfish. They they they've got it figured out. So yeah. for every male hogfish, there's anywhere between five to seven females. They live in harems. Right. And you know what's funny about hogfish? You go down there and you catch that male hogfish, one of the five to seven females in the harem, 
will change sexes and become the dominant male. It takes a hogfish three years to turn into a male. They're all females. They're all females at birth, yes. They're all females at birth. Yeah. And then at three years, they'll turn into a male. Yeah, and it's the opposite with... uh, I think it's the opposite with Don't grouper. Don't opposite me on this. No, Jesus with grouper, Christ, I'm saying. You're but to there's, get me there's, all messed up. <laughs> you're already all messed up. I did my, I did my research on this. <laughs> but there's the same thing with grouper. The grouper start as one. I think it, they grouper start as males. Where, is this a hogfish show or a grouper show? This is both, dog. We talk about right, everything. We'll talk about grouper. But I'm just saying Next there's week. a lot of different fish that do that. But. Smokey's right. They do live in harems. So typically, if you catch a small female hogfish, don't get discouraged because there is a bigger male down there. So whenever you catch a hogfish, you know there's more down there. Even if you catch a very small hogfish, there's another bigger hogfish down there and most likely a legal hogfish too. So definitely a really, really important fact when you catch that first hogfish, there's more to come. Hogfish travel in packs. They're, we already went over this. They live in harems, so when you yeah. catch one, there's at least six no, to but seven if you other just, ones. If you catch one male, there you're not done. Yeah, there's more females in there's the area. There's more males, there's more females Yeah, there. and they it live in areas, so when you find an area that holds a hogfish, All the there's keeper more. hogfish are uh, three years old Yeah, that you can keep. They're a little older than that. I think they're closer oh. to five years. Oh, that, a hogfish, you just called me out on that. <laughs> <laughs> a hogfish has to be 14 inches to the fork. Really important that you How know. How long does it take to get to 14 inches for a hogfish? Uh, let's see here. Three years. FWC might tell Three you. Years. But this is important, guys. Oh, a lot of people don't realize this. This is fork length. So in order to be a keeper hogfish, you can't measure to the little wispy part of the tail. You have to measure to the very middle portion of that tail. So that is a very large fish to be a keeper. So close the mouth. The very that mouth's top, not closed. It's not closed, but uh, it's telling you to close the mouth. So the top of the front it jaw to the, very, <laughs> to the very middle of that fork. Yeah. That's what you want to measure to. A lot of people mismeasure hogfish, and that will cost you your boat and a very expensive ticket. So make sure you measure fork length when you're measuring those hogfish. They got to be 14 inches for fork length. You're allowed up to five per person on those hogfish. Really good eating fish, but they're one of the last fish to bite. They're very, very leader shy. They're very hard to get chewing. And you typically have to get through a lot of different fish. So when you start fishing a spot, you're going to catch the gray snapper or the grunts. You're going to catch the porgies. You're going to catch some lane snapper, some vermilion, and the very last fish to feed is typically those hogfish. And in my experience, when you start anchoring up on a spot, everybody's catching fish, catching fish, and then that fish, that bite kind of peaks, and then all of a sudden the bite starts slowing down. That's when you start targeting the hogfish. And what normally happens, in my experience, is you catch those porgies. All of a sudden, the porgies start coming. Right behind the porgies is the hogfish. No, no, porgies to me. You love the porgies. Everybody knows. Right behind the porgies, that's when the hogfish start coming. So definitely one of the last fish to feed. They're you very guys all message, shy. what's my favorite fish? <laughs> it's porgies. <laughs> You're going to be flooded. Yeah. It's definitely, <laughs> definitely the last fish to feed so you got to get anchored up on a spot you got to be patient you got to fish down that spot and then once everything else stops feeding that's when those hogfish are going to start picking up anywhere from about 30 to about 70 foot of water but definitely they bite best around 40 to 60 foot uh once you get up past 60 foot there's a lot more species out there to get past to find those hogfish we find hogfish as deep as 120 130 foot of water but there's more hungry more aggressive species out there uh and it makes it really difficult to get to those hogfish out there in the deeper water but they live as deep as 150 120 foot and we catch them as shallow as we've caught them on the john's pass bridge before you never know But definitely 30 to about 70 foot is the peak hogfish area. But you got to be patient. You got to fish through a lot of different species to get those hogs, right? You got to go through it. You got to go through it. You got to get anchored up. I know where you can go look for these hogs. And small. With just a mask. 
Smaller ledges are key. Bigger ledges hold more aggressive fish, more species of fish. It's harder to get to those hogs. Smaller ledges, hard flat bottom with those sea fans. That's where those hogfish are hiding. Once you find one, there's plenty more around. You guys want to see my favorite lure? <laughs> We're going to give away a free trip here, guys. Yeah, Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Who won a free trip? Let's do go. a five-hour half day for two people. Five-hour half day for two. Coming right oh up. Oh, my gosh. Who's going to win? Up. John South. Five-hour half day for two, buddy. You just got it. John South won the five-hour half day for two. Remember, if you do get picked as that lucky winner, you do have to message our page within about 15 minutes in order to claim that free trip. Let's see who won the 10-hour all-day for two. 10-hour all-day for two. Susan Brittis. Oh, Susan. That's awesome. Someone's going to claim that one, I know, Phil. <laughs> uh, Susan Brittis won the 10-hour all-day for two. And what about the 39-hour smoke? Who's, gonna who's, gonna who's, be? Got, who's got the 39-hour? Who do you think's got it? I don't, I don't know. Now, before we give away the 39-hour, y'all, remember, we've got our August 21st. We've got the Net Fish and Chill event. That's this this very Wednesday, you can go to our website, hubbardsmarina.com, click fishing trips, and then click events. Under the events tab, you're going to find all our upcoming events. We don't have a Bass Pro Shop seminar coming up this uh, month of uh, September. We already had our August Bass Pro Shops event, August 10th. September, we don't have a Bass Pro Shop seminar scheduled because of the baby's on the way. Any day now, that's gonna pop off, and that's gonna be. Uh, how, that's I'm gonna, gonna be. be I'm gonna be out of the loop for a minute. Uh, Fifteen pounder. Yeah, I'm setting records. That baby. <laughs> that baby's coming out of keeper gag. But, but then we have our live show event that's here. 20, that's only twenty four inches. Twenty four inches. That's My a big baby, baby dog. Yeah, yeah, it's a big baby. Twenty four inches. But this is the Barracuda Net Fish and Chill event. You can click that uh, logo, and that'll take you to the page. That's going to be August 21st, 6 to 10 p.m. We're going to be giving away tons of free trips at that event. We're going to be giving away a free trip every 30 minutes. There's going to be free beer, free vodka, free kayaks, free charters, free everything. Tons of cool stuff. What the mass that? I'm not telling you. You're not invited. <laughs> <laughs> it's this Wednesday, August 21st, 6 to 10 p.m. Yeah. at the Barracuda Tackle. I'm requesting uh, that off. Yeah, Barracuda Tackle at their warehouse. It's going to be a ton of fun. Net fish and chill. I'll be there. Uh, barring the birth of my son, I will definitely be there and having a good time. So hopefully we'll see you there. I might take Smokey. I don't know. Depends We're going to video that. Depends on how the rest of tonight goes. <laughs> but let's see who won the 39-hour trip. You ready, Smoke? Yeah. You got the drum roll for me? No. Do the drum roll. No. You got it. <laughs> drum roll, please. 39-hour uh, trip. Now, there it is, Joe. I don't know how to pronounce your last name with the dilly dilly. <laughs> Joe, SOS, that's bad. Nah, well, remember, guys, tune in next week for another <laughs> live stream show. Don't forget about our Fox 13 event every Friday morning. Fox 13, 8, 15 a.m. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're, you're just, just too busy. There you go. You guys have a good night. Thanks for tuning in.